Ashwagandha is often called the king of Ayurvedic herbs that grows in India, the Middle East and Africa. It's been used for centuries in traditional Indian medicine for hormonal balance, stress and anxiety. But there's a lot of controversial opinions about Ashwagandha online. Some people say it's excellent and it has a lot of evidence, whereas others say it makes them feel emotionless and apathy. In this video, I'm going to look at the research from human clinical trials on Ashwagandha to see if it really has any benefits and what's the correct dose. Ashwagandha is considered an adaptogenic herb, which means that it can help to regulate your nervous system and immune system. Adaptogens can help with stress resilience and well-being. The word ashwagandha translates from smell of horse, which sounds quite interesting, and it kind of alludes to either the smell of the herb or that it gives you the virility of a horse. Is this true? Let's look at the effects of ashwagandha on sex hormones. There are many clinical trials showing ashwagandha improves testosterone and subjective sexual well-being in men. A 2021 review of clinical trials found that KSM-66 ashwagandha at a dose of 600 mg per day does improve testosterone by 15% in young men if used for over 8 weeks. A dose of 657 mg a day in infertile men was seen to increase testosterone by 17% after 90 days. Ashwagandha was found to increase testosterone in 9 studies, which is quite a large amount of studies, and 6 of them had a low risk of bias, which is a good sign in my opinion, that most of these studies do indicate that ashwagandha has a positive effect on hormones. So it does appear that ashwagandha at a dose of 600 milligrams a day improves testosterone modestly in men. Most of that effect is probably coming from decreased levels of cortisol and stress. High cortisol and stress can wreak havoc to testosterone and ashwagandha has benefits on stress as well, which we'll talk about shortly. The effects of ashwagandha on testosterone are greater in men who experience higher amounts of stress and higher levels of cortisol. Regarding women, then a 2021 randomized controlled trial found that 300 mg of ashwagandha twice a day for 8 weeks was able to reduce symptoms of menopause in perimenopausal women and it also increased their estradiol levels. But does that increase in testosterone and estrogen have any carryover to sexual or physical performance? Let's look at ashwagandha's effects on erections. A 2011 randomized controlled trial found that ashwagandha didn't improve psychogenic erectile dysfunction. The same authors of the study a few years later tested this again and they found the same results. Ashwagandha didn't improve psychogenic erectile dysfunction. However, another 2022 clinical trial found that 300 milligrams of ashwagandha twice a day for 8 weeks did improve subjective perception of sexual performance in adult males while also increasing their testosterone slightly. So there's no evidence that ashwagandha would improve or help with erections. But it does appear to improve subjective perception of sexual performance, which probably is because of the slight increase in testosterone levels. Regarding women without hormonal disturbances, taking 300 milligrams of ashwagandha twice a day for 8 weeks has been seen to increase sexual health. So both men and women see an improvement in their sexual well-being if they take 600 milligrams of ashwagandha a day. What about physical fitness? A 2021 meta-analysis on 13 studies concluded that ashwagandha supplementation appears to be more effective than placebo in improving physical performance in healthy men and women. In a 2018 clinical trial, taking 500 milligrams of ashwagandha per day led to a significantly greater increase in the one rep max of squats and bench press compared to placebo. Another 2020 meta-analysis found that ashwagandha supplementation might increase VO2 max in athletes and non-athletes by about 3 points. The doses used were 300 to 500 milligrams once or twice a day. Another 2021 clinical trial showed similar benefits on cardiorespiratory fitness and endurance. That's quite interesting to see an increase in VO2 max and physical performance from ashwagandha. There's no like clear mechanism by which it happens, but it probably has to do with the reduction in stress and an increase in testosterone. So let's talk about stress then. There are many studies finding how ashwagandha lowers cortisol and stress levels. A 2021 meta-analysis of clinical trials found that ashwagandha can alleviate anxiety and stress. However, the treatment dose, duration, and the type of extract used varied a lot between the studies. The doses ranged from 240 to 1250 milligrams a day. A 2022 randomized controlled trial found that ashwagandha at a dose of 225 to 400 milligrams a day significantly decreased cortisol levels compared to placebo. The ashwagandha group also reported improvements in anxiety, perceived stress, food cravings, and depression. So a dose of 225 to 400 milligrams a day already appears to be effective for stress management. However, as you recall from the hormones section, a dose of 600 milligrams was optimal for testosterone production. So if you're trying to optimize your hormones and stress, then a dose of 600 milligrams a day would probably be more optimal. 
regarding stress and hormones, then sleep is another critical part here. And it appears to be one of the key aspects through which ashwagandha works. A 2021 meta-analysis of five randomized controlled trials found that ashwagandha improved sleep in adults, but the effects were larger in people with insomnia. The dosage used was over 600 milligrams a day. Reducing anxiety and stress will probably improve your sleep, but it looks like the effects of ashwagandha on sleep are more evident in people who have insomnia or severe sleep deprivation. So far, I've outlined a lot of clinical trials showing how ashwagandha has benefits on hormones, sleep, anxiety, stress, and even physical performance. However, there's one interesting side effect that a lot of ashwagandha users report, and that's anhedonia or loss of emotions and a feeling of apathy. There could be a mechanism in terms of reducing stress and cortisol and the hormone balance. If you suppress cortisol too much, you might feel numb and tired because cortisol's job is to wake you up and make you energized. Yes, if you're overstressed and too anxious, then too much cortisol will make you more anxious and more stressed out. But if you have too low cortisol levels, then you will feel more tired and less energetic. And that could also include more apathy. Unfortunately, there's no clinical trials looking at ashwagandha's effects on becoming emotionless or feeling apathy. But the studies we do have indicate that ashwagandha is great for stress and cortisol management. Maybe too much will have unwanted side effects on your emotions. But I think this could also be useful for some people who do struggle with emotional control or if they're experiencing anxiety. There is a case report of a 41-year-old woman who saw adrenal hypofunction from ashwagandha, which means she was producing too little cortisol. However, this effect was reversible and it went away after cessation of supplementation. I guess the key point here is for you to just try it out and see if it works. There's a lot of differences in people's neurotransmitter profiles. Some people have high cortisol, some people have high dopamine, some people have high serotonin, and maybe too much serotonin from ashwagandha can make them feel more emotionless. In the clinical trials I've mentioned, ashwagandha has been seen to be well tolerated, with the most common side effects being upset stomach, nausea, or drowsiness. However, there are also several case studies of individuals getting liver damage from ashwagandha. That's usually because the vast majority of supplements, especially herbal supplements, aren't regulated, and they're often contaminated with heavy metals or some other ingredients. This 2024 review on herbal and dietary supplements and liver injury outlined that ashwagandha has been seen to be implicated in liver damage in some people. Other herbs on the list include other Ayurvedic herbs like turmeric. And lastly, ashwagandha is also not recommended to pregnant or breastfeeding women. In conclusion, ashwagandha appears to have a consistent benefit on testosterone, sleep, stress, anxiety, as well as physical performance. There are some individuals who might feel numbness or lack of emotions from using it, but that appears to be more like an anecdotal report, which is not really backed up by other clinical trials. The optimal dose appears to be around 600 milligrams a day, either in one dose or 300 milligrams twice a day. If you want to learn about what are the supplements that I'm taking, then check out my free supplement list in the description. Description. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.